got into my eye. Hello, Professor. Are you okay? Are you okay? Okay. Do you want to keep the water for 15 minutes? I want to see. I'm going to see. I'm going to sit in the class. If you feel the pain in your eyes, you feel the pain in your eyes. Okay. Thank you so much. Teach, take classes here too. What do you like that? Ruiya College of the University of Mumbai, which was established in 1937, is one of the top academic institutions in India. A Ruiya College principal, Dr. Anushri Lakur, invited Savorno to give a lecture in physics and computer science. So, let's start. Oh my God, I can hear the door opening. Who's in? May I come in, Professor? Can I enter? Can I come in, Professor? Yes. I'm late. Sorry, Professor. That's not just late. You were one hour late. If you were that late again, don't even think about taking a step into my classroom. Now, where was I? Oh, right. Um, we were on incline plane. I am bored. Can staff court? Let's clean the board. Our chum she can get incline plane. Today we will be learning about incline planes. So let's start by talking about the incline. The incline has a coefficient of friction of about 0.3. Let's say that it's inclined at an angle of 30 degrees. Let's just disregard that for now. But anyway, this has something a force in front of it, F D parallel, and then a force behind it, which is F F. So now. This, these are the two forces. So now, can somebody explain to me what F G parallel is and what F F is? By the way, you would get the same answer. I got the answer, Professor. Thank you, Abhiji. So the correct answer was that F F is the force of friction, and F G parallel is one of the components of F G. The other component I will draw now is F G perpendicular, which is perpendicular to the plane, and we have. Fg over there, and then Fn over there, which is at an angle. All right. So now these are the four forces, or if you count that skeleton Fg, I drew five. And so now we have a um, mu k, and so we know that Fg perpendicular. Is let's say uh, mg cosine theta, which is fg cosine theta, and we have fg parallel, which is mg sine theta or fg sine theta. All right. So now we also know the force of friction. The force of friction is equal to mu k or mu f, which is the coefficient of friction, times f n. And we care about for, for fg perpendicular because fg perpendicular is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction to f of n. And so that means that we can, if we find F D perpendicular, we can find F of n, which allows us to find F of f. So we only care about the two forces which act in the direction of the acceleration for the most part, F f and F G parallel. And so now, how, what can we make an equation for? Well, let me just give you something. So what is Newton's second law? Can somebody tell me? F equal m. F equal m. Good. Thank you. Well. You told us that that is equal to uh, the net force is equal to F equals m a, and so now what are the net forces? Well, we have F of F, and we also have F G parallel, and so now that's all equal to m a. Now let's plug in. We know F G parallel or F F rather is mu k F F, so. Let's get that over here. M U K F N, and then we subtract that for, for by um, M D sine theta. Um, sorry, just made a little mistake there, and that's all equal to M A. Now, do you guys spot a common factor? That's right, it's M, the mass. We cancel out those two M's, thereby leaving us with M U K cosine theta, and then minus G sine theta. And so now we have a much more simplified equation. So that's equal to all to n. And now all we need to do is plug in. So let's simplify. So g mu k cosine theta minus sine theta. I just factor out g for my convenience. You don't have to. And so now the thing is that this must mean. That this Newton's second law is here. It is not going at a constant velocity, but rather there is some acceleration over here. So there is some acceleration, 
And so now, all we have to do is plug everything in. So is there anybody in this crowd that has a calculator? Everybody, take out your calculator now. Oh my goodness, it's magnificent. All of the black blocks in your hands. So, anyway, let's plug everything in first so you guys know what you're supposed to do. So 9.81, then 0 0.3, and we know that the theta is 30, so we get cosine 30, and so, sorry, and then minus sine 30 is equal to, not, uh, well, a. And so now, we have to find all of this. And so, we know that uh, cosine 30 is 0 0.866. So, everybody, take out your calculators, plug everything in. All right. So, let's see if we can get an answer over here. So, this is all equal to A. Sorry for forgetting to write that. And so, we are nearing the end of this lecture. And so, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, to take this thing. We multiply 0 0.3 by 0 0.866, and then we multiply that by minus 9.81. Remember, it's a negative. And so, I can see all of you have a calculator around. I think professor made a mistake. He wrote force of friction before parallel component of gravitational force. I don't think it's a mistake. Why? Either way, you would get the same answer. The acceleration is 2.36 meter per second squared. Thank you, everybody. And so, now, one person told me, thank you, that this is minus 2.36. Alright, but, did you realize I made a mistake? Earlier, I put f of f in front of f of x, or f perpendicular, or parallel, when in reality it was supposed to be f to the parallel minus f, f of f. But anyway... You'll so plug that in and you'll still get 2.36 meters per second squared. The homework is to investigate what happens to the acceleration when you increase the angle from say 30 to 60, 70, 80, and then finally 90. And so what is the acceleration when the angle is 90? And can you tell me if it goes up or down? That's the homework. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Fear Malenge. <laughs> became the youngest professor in the history of mankind.